Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you have seen the recent hype surrounding shorts lately, you may have considered doing some for yourself. If you're unfamiliar though with the shorts thing, go ahead and check out a video by the Spiffing Brit that explains why this feature on YouTube is pretty broken right now if you're looking to get a ton of views and fast subscribers. I've actually been doing a little bit of an experiment with this with a channel that I made for my little brother exclusively for shorts. And in the last four days, starting from zero, it has gained 35 subscribers and over 10,000 views, which is pretty solid for a brand new channel. So if you're looking to make your own shorts channel, definitely go check out the Spiffing Brits video because he'll tell you how to do it, and then come back here so I can show you how to make a template so that you can pump these things out at a crazy pace. If you don't want to make your own or you're not very confident in Fusion, or for whatever reason, there's a free one in the description down below. It's a little bit less customizable, but it is free, so go ahead and click on that link and you'll be off to the races. But if you're going that route, make sure you watch at least the beginning of this video because I'm going to show you a couple of things that you need to set up in advance and in order for the template to actually function properly. So without any further ado, make sure you've subscribed to the channel and let's jump into it. Here we are inside of DaVinci Resolve. We're on the edit page. I have my clip. In this case, I'm just using a screenshot of some Apex Legends right here. And the first thing we're gonna do, and this is for those of you that are downloading it, you have to do this too. We're gonna go to File, and then we can also hit Shift-9, but we're just gonna go Project Settings. And then we need to change our timeline resolution from 1920 by 1080 to 1080 by 1920 because in order to be considered shorts content, it's got to be in the portrait orientation. So we'll do that and then we'll hit save. In my case, cancel because I've already done it. So now our timeline resolution is in the portrait orientation. So what we're gonna do is grab a fusion composition. And if you don't see these, go ahead and click on effects library up here. Go to your toolbox, drop that down, jump into effects and grab fusion comp. Drag that right out into your timeline here. Bump that up to the beginning. And now we're gonna jump into fusion. If you're not super confident in fusion, just feel free to rewind this, slow it down, do whatever you need to do because you can definitely make this yourself. It's not too complicated. So now that we have our media out down here, we're gonna go ahead and bring in our new clip. We're gonna drag the output from that clip into our media out. And we'll see that we actually have a landscape orientation image, which is not what we want. So with media in one selected, outlined in red, we're gonna go ahead and click on this resize tool right here in the middle. And that's gonna snap us to our timeline size. But that looks pretty gross, it's okay. What we're gonna do next is reduce that height until we are looking close to the correct aspect ratio that we're looking for here. So now with resize selected, we're gonna go ahead and click image plane 3D, camera 3D, and then renderer 3D in that order. And now I'm gonna drag my merge up that was automatically created, drag that so we kind of have a little bit of a thing. And then our resize to media out right here, we wanna just cut that line. So now we have media in going into resize, going into image plane, which goes into merge 3D, which has a camera attached to it. And then that goes into a renderer. And then that is gonna go into our media out. And now we have this blank page. So the next thing we're gonna do is click on image plane, press the number one on our keyboard or fill in this little dot right here to put that in viewer number one. And then with that over there, we're just gonna click on camera 3D. If we look at this, we can see that we have a camera outlined right there. What we're gonna do is grab our blue control here and just drag that back so we start to see our clip. And we might need to go back pretty far. Some basic controls if you're inside this camera window. If you hold shift and then right click to drag, you can rotate around the middle point like this. If you just scroll, you move up and down. If you control scroll, you can zoom out and zoom in. And then if you click and drag with your middle mouse, you can move around like this. And that should be all the controls that you need for this tutorial. So now we're going to move that a little further back. So, uh, kind of like that. And now we have too much space on the bottom and not enough on the top. So what we're going to do is go ahead and bring this up so that those become a little bit more even, just like that. And I'm actually going to bring this out a little bit further so that we can get that whole box in there and get a little bit more of the screen. 
So now we have this dead space on top and dead space on the bottom, and our clip, or in this case screenshot, right there in the middle. So now after our renderer 3D, we're gonna go ahead and add three merges. One, two, three, that lead to our media out. So now we have merge number one here, which we're gonna go ahead and add a text node to by clicking this little T, or hitting shift space, typing text, and then adding that in. And now we're gonna drag text number one into our merge number one, and then we're gonna make another text node right there. Text two goes to merge two. And then merge three, we're gonna add a background node. And now we're gonna drag the output from that background into our merge three, and everything turns black. That's okay. Click on your merge three, then press control T to flip those inputs. So now the background is the yellow line, which is the background. We can adjust that color in our inspector window over here by clicking on color and then selecting one of these. So we'll do uh, a teal color for this. And then text number one, we're gonna keep as our top text. So I'm gonna turn on caps lock here just so this is a little quicker. I'm gonna type in subscribe and move that to the top. Now I'm gonna click on text number two and type, oh, caps lock is on, daily shorts. And then we're gonna move that down to the bottom. Now we'll grab our text number one again and we'll make that a bit bigger so it fills that space and grab text number two and do the same thing. Boom, just like that. Now background, we're never really gonna to need to touch again. All we're gonna be doing now, ooh, ooh, that's not even, text number one. Move up a little further. Camera 3D. Move that down a little bit. There we go, that looks better. So we'll grab text two, move that up just a touch, and then increase that size. Perfect. So we have subscribe, daily shorts, our content in the middle, and then a colored background. And really with this background node, if you wanted to put something else in here, like a pattern or some kind of media in, you could do that just as easily and it would work. But now that we've done all this, now that we have our basic setup, we're gonna add some animations in for our top text and our bottom text. Once those are done, all we have to do is save this as our template and then we're good to go. And I'll show you how to put new clips in and it will work for each one of them and it will just automatically set the aspect ratio to be just like this. And we'll have those animations looping so they can be as long as they need to be. For our first text, we're gonna just change the size over and over. We're working in 24 frames per second, so I'm gonna do 12 frames, half a second, and I'm gonna keyframe that size. And actually, I'm gonna set one at the beginning as well, and then just pop over to that next one, 12 frames. We're gonna make it a little bit bigger at 12 frames than it was at zero. Then we'll go 12 frames further, and we'll just have it shrink back down. And then I'm just gonna go every 12 frames and adjust the size back and forth so that as we move through our animation, it kind of pulses. So now if we watch this, that top text is gonna kind of pulse, draw a little bit more attention to itself. You know, like just, it looks better now. And if you want that to look even better, you can go ahead and open up this spline editor at the top, click on text number one, Find your points, mine are all right there. Go ahead and select all of them, press S, and then it will smooth out those keyframes so it'll kind of pulse more naturally. Instead of being a rigid linear change, it kind of slides into each one. And then now that we have all of those selected still, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this little swoop swoop down here in the bottom of our spline menu, and that's going to set a loop. So now, no matter how long we make our fusion composition on the edit page, it will continue to pulse like that, which is pretty cool. Now we're gonna do something with our daily shorts text. And for this one, I might try to do like a, like a news ticker constant flow type thing. So I'm going to keyframe in our layout, our center points. Oop, not right there. We want to do this on frame zero. We're gonna keyframe our center point, and then we're going to move forward. We'll say 24 frames for this one, and we will go ahead and move it over there. And then on the 25th frame, so one frame later, it's gonna be all the way over here so that nobody sees it cross through the middle. 
and then 24 frames after that, so 49. We're gonna go ahead and swoop that all the way back through, just like that. And then frame 50, we're gonna put it right back on the other side, just like before. And then at 74, we're gonna push that right back on through again, and so on and so forth. And then at 120, that's when we're gonna loop. So this last one will be a little bit longer than the rest of them, but it shouldn't be too bad. So go ahead and loop these. I'm not gonna smooth them since we're so close to the edges. If I smooth these transitions, we might like bounce back where we're visible when we should be off screen and we don't want that. So this one, it's gonna stay linear. So hit play. Okay, so that first one needs some adjustment there, but other than that, it's looking pretty good. All right, so we'll grab text two again and that is going to need to start off screen over here. All right, now let's check that out. Comes through, comes through, comes through. That could even be slowed down a little bit. And if you want to slow that down, just grab a set of your keyframes, hold shift, move them over. Holding shift will allow them to move exclusively in a straight line. So now if we watch that back again, there's a much longer time that that daily shorts spends out there in the actual blue. And then as soon as we hit this next keyframe, it just snaps over because that's not how we originally designed it. So make this go as fast or as slow as you need it to, to look good with your clips. And then actually now we're pretty much done. So we're just going to go ahead and select all of these things. We're going to right click on any of them now. Go to Macro, Create Macro, and then right here, we're gonna name this Shorts. And now with our Image Plane 3D, we don't really need to change anything with that ever. The only things that we need to change are gonna be the text, the background color, and anything else that you can think of that you need to add. So how we keep controls in what we're doing here is by going text number one, don't need anything there. So styled text, if we go into our text, you can see right here, this will be what's called your styled text, is like what you actually wrote. We wanna be able to control that in our template, so we're gonna click on that. We're gonna click font and style, color, everything that we want to be able to change later on after we're done with this. And I'm definitely gonna want all of those for both of our text nodes, so I'm gonna find text number two right there, close that up and then check all of these boxes for this one as well. And again, these are just the controls that we're going to keep. If this doesn't make sense right now, just continue following along step by step and then it will make more sense once the tool is actually finished and I can show you how it works. And now that we have all those controls for text one and text two, I'm gonna go ahead and drop down background here because we also want to be able to color our background. So I'm gonna collapse this image menu and then for color, I'm going to check all of these boxes. All of our color options we want for that background because who knows what color we're gonna want it to be for a specific video. And now what we wanna do, now that we have all of our controls selected, we're just gonna close this window. It's gonna pop up, save changes to macro tool number one. You're gonna say yes, and then save it as shorts in the folder that it default opens to. So it'll be DaVinci Resolve, Support, Fusion, a folder called macros. That's where you want to keep this. So we're gonna select that, and then we're gonna hit save. I already have this, so I'm replacing it, yes. And now the coolest part. So I'm gonna just take all that right out of there. Now with all of these disconnected, I'm gonna hit shift space and then type in shorts. And now we have that new macro that we just made. So when we add this, this one node does the exact same thing as all of these nodes that we just put together up top. So now we'll drag our media in into shorts and then we'll drag shorts into media out and we have our little clip that we made. Daily Shorts goes through on a loop. That first one's too long, so I would go back and rebuild this a little bit. I, you can still change things up here and then just reselect all the controls you want, save it as a macro again, and just kind of tweak it. I mean, you have all the tools you need. Tweak it until it looks how you want it to look, 
And then in our shorts node here, we have all those controls that we decided to save. So we have top text here, we have bottom text here, we have color controls for both of those, as well as color controls for the background. So if we click on this, turn that red, We'll have a red background now instead, and we can change the text color to black. You can see just how controllable this is, and all you have to do is add that one node. You need to make sure though beforehand that you go File, Project Settings, and then make sure that your resolution is the correct resolution for shorts. Otherwise, when you add your shorts node in here, that resize is gonna snap your actual image to be the resolution of your timeline. So this is what we wanna do. We wanna make sure that we have that portrait timeline. I'm gonna fix up that bottom text real quick, just that animation so that nobody gets the download and thinks it sucks. But that's all for today's video. My name is Garrett Harding. This is how to make a shorts template in DaVinci Resolve Fusion, and I'll see you on Thursday.